a good day uh, in, in spite of the rain. Jeremy, can you do roll call for us, please? Yes, ma'am. Chair Sheila Lamine Khashoggi. Present. Vice Chair Genevieve C. Sims. Present. Mr. David Bland. He posted he wouldn't be here because he's out of town. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gerald Ticano. Present. Mr. Sean Ingram. I haven't heard from Sean. Yes, ma'am. I'll note. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Greer Webb. Greer would not be here today. Mr. Johnny Thomas. I'm here. Mr. Deontay Thomas. I'm here, thank you. Yes, sir. Dr. Cindy Cottle. Here, present. Mr. Ty Harrell. Present. Madam Chair, I yield it back to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, we will now have the approval of the Police Advisory Board agenda for tonight. Uh, September the 22nd, 2021. Do I have a, a motion to approve? I approve. A motion to approve. Do I see a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Agenda approved for tonight. Um, the approval for the minutes from previous meeting, August the 25th. 2021, do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Do I hear a second? A second. Thank you. All in favor to approve the uh, minutes for August the 25th? Aye. 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 Motion carried out, approval is set. Um, we will have a staff um, report by Demetrius. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, hope everyone is doing well. Um, Dr. Caesar last day was September the 3rd. Um, and right now, um, Evan Raleigh, which is here this evening, is serving as our um, interim right now. Um, Mr. Raleigh is the assistant city manager with the city of Raleigh. So, um, he's serving in um, the director capacity for our department right now. Um, so he's on the call as well. Uh, right now, don't have many updates right now, just working with um, board members to get a couple of things approved, but I'll allow them to speak on things that we're working on. Um, right now, those are the only updates I have right now. Anyone have any questions? And welcome, um, Assistant Manager Evan Raleigh to our meeting. Thank you for joining us. Any questions for um, Demetrius at this time? Um, chair report, um, we was hoping that, and I thank Chief Patterson for joining us. Thank you, Chief, for joining us th tonight to give us a, a presentation um, on our role and your role of the police advisory board and the connection that you would like to see and make. Also um, about ACORN, if you could give us a um, so, something about ACORN, if you could, uh, about what ACORN is about. Um, we're here to listen to her presentation to um, not ask questions, let her finish everything she wants to say. So tonight is gonna be really a listening session and how we can better assist um, with the policies and the procedures that we are tasked with. Um, before I yield it to um, Chief Patterson, I would like for um, the assistant manager, um, Evan Raleigh to um, speak and um, give us any information you would like to um, share with us. Thank you. Well, good evening, uh, members of the Police Advisory Board. I appreciate it. Assistant, Assistant Raleigh, Assistant yes. Manager Raleigh. Yes, can you hear me? 
Yes, sir, we can. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. I, I was having any techno technological challenges there. Well, again, I just wanted to say good evening to you all. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the invitation to join you tonight. <clears throat> and um, thank you to uh, Chairman Alameen Khashoggi for the invitation as well. Uh, as Demetrius um, indicated at the start of the meeting, <clears throat> Dr. Caesar uh, recently departed the city. Uh, and so I am filling in in her role uh, in an interim capacity. We are um, in the process right now of uh, seeking a, a full-time replacement. Uh, as you all know well, Dr. Caesar uh, did some tremendous work on behalf of the city. Um, very, very proud of the work that she was able to begin. Um, you know, I'm carrying it forward in an interim capacity and, and just trying to fill those shoes because she has certainly left a hole for the organization. But, um, you know, we are hoping to uh, be in position to bring on a full time replacement for her in, in the coming months. Um, so, uh, again, just just say thank you. I won't take up much time. But uh, again, just want to say looking forward to working for this, working with this board, um, you know, uh, even beyond my capacity as an interim uh, DEI director, uh, but even beyond that, uh, I, I really am looking forward to seeing how we can work collectively, collaboratively, constructively together uh, to advance the initiatives that I know that council has uh, entrusted and, and tasked this committee with. So again, just say thank you. Look forward to, uh, to getting to know you all and, and uh, working collaboratively with you now and in the future. Thank you, um, city manager. Um, now we will have um, Chief Patterson to give us, take your time um, with a, a presentation um, for the board so we can better understand the plans and the things that um, you are um, planning for the community and the board as well as we working together collaboratively. So you have the floor and thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Well, thank you, Madam Chairman, for that. Um, and good evening to everybody. Thank you so much for inviting me to your session um, and also to, to Raleigh. I'm so excited to be here um, as your new chief. Um, I think I may have met some of you at my swearing in and, and I appreciate you being there for that. And also too, I appreciate your support of RPD. Now, I, was, I didn't realize that I had to do a presentation tonight, um, but that's okay. I don't have a PowerPoint or anything like that. Um, I think I'll just kind of talk through some of the points um, concerning the ACORNS unit. Um, and let me firstly say that this vision for an ACORNS unit and ACORNS um, stands for addressing crisis through um, outreach, referrals, networking, and service. And so this is a, a collaborative that came out of the mind of Chief Deck Brown before she left. It's something that she envisioned that the um, organization would have, which really is was wonderful on her part because we know that in policing that a good number of the individuals that we come in contact with um, those that we work with or that we're called for a service is having some kind of mental crisis or is suffering from some kind of mental issue, whether it's substance abuse, whether it's homelessness, whether it is um, bipolar disorder or something like that. And really as police officers, you know, we are not totally equipped to handle that. But when we put together a group like ACORNS, it gives us a resource or a tool to help to address that. So I really think it's a step in the right direction. Um, I was a police officer at the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Officer for 25 years. Um, we stood up a unit similar to ACORNS there in Charlotte about three years ago. It's called the CPCRT team. And they have a similar goal where they make interventions with those who might be dealing with mental um, issues or crises. So basically, again, ACORNS is addressing crisis through outreach, referrals, networking, and service. The team became operational in June of this year. Um, in becoming operational, um, it consists of a sergeant that is over the unit. We have a detective, and there are currently three officers as well as two social workers. 
And we are hiring a third social worker because the plan is to for the officers and the social workers to be paired up together as a team. And then when they provide services or make interventions, they would go together as a team. That way we have a multidisciplinary team um, of a police officer and a social worker. The social worker in these cases are, um, are, are certified social workers. They have to have a degree in that area. Our officers, the qualification to be on this unit, they have to be what's called crisis intervention trained, CIT training, you may have heard of that. Crisis intervention training is a 40 hour training that um, they go through on learning how to deal with individuals who are dealing with mental crises. Um, the wonderful thing that I love here at RPD, and we didn't have this at CMPD, but RPD, all our officers go through that 40 hour training, which is wonderful. They get it um, in the academy and they continue to train in that area. When I was in Charlotte, we only sent officers to that after they had graduated the academy, once they had been in the field for a while. But here in Raleigh, um, Chief Deck Brown saw the importance of making sure officers had that training and that they could interact um, well um, with the public. And so she um, impressed upon the officers to go through that. So they are trained with it. So ACORNS, again, is a multi multidisciplinary team. It's uh, with crisis intervention, um, trained officers and social workers. Um, their goal is to provide passionate, professional, and safe law enforcement response to consumers and families who are in crisis due to mental illness or substance abuse. Um, the main things that ACORN does is whenever there's a situation that might, where there might be a need for a clinician or for a social worker to engage, the officers would go out on the call initially. We do not send our ACORNs unit out to hot calls or what we call hot calls, where their safety would be in jeopardy. Um, on the front end, our officers would go to those calls, they would assess the calls, and then on the back end, the clinician or the social worker and the officer will make referrals, was a referral is made, then they would come in on the back end and they would contact that individual. So point in case, a few weeks ago when I got here, and I've only been on the ground now, I'm going into my seventh week um, being here as the chief in Raleigh, um, we had a situation with a barricaded individual in, in a residence who was suffering from a mental disorder. His family had uh, went to the magistrate's office and received an involuntary commitment order for him. When the officers, because trained police officers have to serve those um, IVC papers. When the officers went to the residence to serve it, he barricaded himself in that residence. He did want, not wanna come out. And so then we had our negotiator speak with him, try to negotiate with him. We also call the ACORNS unit to try to make phone contact with that individual. Again, we don't put them in that hot scene. We don't put them right there where they could be in danger, but we allow them to be able to talk to that individual if he was willing. He was not willing to talk to them. Um, long story short, basically what happened was we were able to, um, he, he came out on his own to the resident, took him to the mental facility where he was treated after he was treated by medical professionals, then the ACORNS unit reached out to the family again, provided sources and resources for them, worked with them to ensure that he had his proper medications. If there were any follow-up appointments he had, the ACORNS unit would be available for that. If there were additional resources that he would need to help with his situation, the ACORNS unit would be able to do those referrals to other um, agencies and nonprofits within the area. And so they partner with those to be able to provide those resources. So really the goal then of the ACORNS unit is not to be that frontline um, resource, but to be the one that comes in on the back end to do those interventions and provide those resources. Now I told you the unit was just stood up in June. So we're very much in our infancy. We're trying to really work our way through what this unit is gonna look like completely. Um, we do have a directive on just a shell on, on what we're um, going to be doing, but there is a lot more that we've got to learn over time. In forming this unit, we looked at the best practices models um, kind of across the country just to see what this unit should look like and we wanna emulate that. But we also realized that here in Raleigh, we have some unique things, um, some unique challenges with 
some of the issues that we have here, the, the homelessness that we are dealing with, substance abuse um, issues and that kind of thing. So it's really what I like to say is a work in progress. We don't have all the answers yet on how ACORNS is gonna look entirely. Um, we're gonna make adjustments as we go along. Um, I have met with the team. I have been out to their facility where they are. They are at a location that we, is a safe place um, where members of the public can come, those who might be um, dealing with any kind of mental crisis can come and talk to the counselors. We intentionally made it a safe place like that. We don't make it a police station because we know that those who are suffering from, from crisis do not always want to talk to a police officer in a uniform that looks like me necessarily. Um, they want to talk to somebody who's trained to handle those situations. And that's what the ACORNS unit is about. So um, there are a couple things I just want to highlight, and then we can certainly open it up to questions um, that you may have. The ACORN team um, has five robust prongs. Um, one is outreach. And again, they are taking referrals that come from the field. If an officer goes on a call for service and that officer recognizes that somebody might have a mental health need, he or she can make a referral to the ACORNS unit, and then they will follow up on it. Also to education. So aside from just providing services and interventions, um, they are starting to go out and educate the public on what the ACORNS unit is, as well as resources that are available to those who need it. Also to case management, and that's where the social workers come in. They, um, each individual that they interact with and work with, they do it in confidence. And then we build a case on that person so that if we have to have a follow-up, um, Inter interaction with them, or if that person leaves, let's say we know that like, particularly with our homeless population, they're very transient. They might live here today, and then they might move to Durham, and they could go to Holly Springs and different area, but we provide case management. So if they do, and they um, work with another agency, we're able to provide information and share that information about what we dealt with here in, in Raleigh with that individual. Also to field services. Again, that's when the clinician and the officer are going out as a team to do those follow-ups. And then they also do in, in investigation and intervention. That's why we have a detective on the ACORNS unit because there are cases sometimes where um, those individuals who are suffering from mental um, episodes might be a victim of a crime. It is a crime. And so somebody has to investigate that. And you need somebody that understands what the person might be dealing with, somebody that has the compassion and the professionalism to really deal with somebody who's in mental crisis. And so having a detective on the team, um, she is there for that purpose. Um, the detective that we currently have is a, a wonderful person to be on the team because she has been engaged with the Raleigh population for a long time. She knows many of the individuals that um, are dealing with homelessness. She has talked with them over the years. She has known them. She has come up in this police department answering calls for service and being in those areas where those individuals are. So she is a great person to have on the team rather than bringing in somebody just brand new that doesn't know or isn't, doesn't have a connection already with certain members of the community. So those are the five prongs um, of the ACORNS unit. Also to referrals and calls for service assigned to the ACORNS team are responded by the social worker and an officer who are trained to respond to those crises. And the ACORN team does not provide diagnose, diagnosis, which I think is very important. Um, they do not provide diagnosis, counseling services or other healthcare to individuals in the community. We partner with other agencies that do that and nonprofits that do that and then we make the referrals to them. So just kind of in a nutshell, that is the ACORNS unit. That is the purpose of them. That is their goal and what they're doing. Um, again, as I have stated, this is still in its infancy. So we're learning a lot. We are growing. Um, I met with the team just the other day just to get some feedback on how things were looking, how many referrals that they have been doing. And they are starting to get a lot at this point. Um, we'll continue with the education campaign so that people know what they're about. And, um, and we're just hopeful and well, I'm not gonna say hopeful, I'm just gonna say that we're confident that this group is gonna to continue to serve a great um, service in our community and for those who needs the help the most. Uh, Chief, can you elaborate on um, your role and our role together um, and what you uh, want to see and your experience um, dealing with um, advisory boards? 
Um, sure. So, and, and, and I don't want to be unfair in how I answer this question because I don't know a lot about the Community Advisory Board here in Raleigh. I mean, I, I just don't know much about you. And I know that it's a, it's a new board that's been stood up. Um, where I can speak from is my experience in Charlotte and what we, I have seen there. So in Charlotte, we have a Citizens Review Board. And their role, I believe, is a little bit different. The Citizens Review Board um, looks at cases of officer misconduct or alleged misconduct. It can be appealed to the Citizens Review Board. And that board has the authority under the ordinance to be able to look at cases and make a decision on whether the chief erred in his or her decision concerning those cases. That is my experience. That is, I think, a bit different than what this board is. My understanding of this board, and certainly you can correct me if I'm wrong, is really to look at policy and to make recommendations to the chief and to the city manager um, concerning police policy. Um, I think that's an opportunity, and if indeed if that is the role of the advisory board, that is an opportunity, I think, for us to collaborate, to be able to talk through some of our policies and say, well, for your board to get a better understanding of why the policy is the way it is, from a police perspective, also then I can get a perspective from a citizen perspective. And then we can meet somewhere in the middle if we disagree on a point or two concerning the policy. So in my limited role, um, Madam Chair, that's about all that I really know. Uh, feel free to educate me more. Um, if there are greater responsibilities of the um, advisory board, I'm, I'm open to hearing. I was really hoping on this meeting that I would get an intro that I would um, be able to meet virtually all the members and that I would get a little bit more about your role and what you're doing as a new board. Thank you, thank you, Chief. And we, and we will do that and we will start now, if anything else, um, we'll start with, um, I'm Sheila Alameen Khashoggi. I am the chair and I am the community advocate. And so um, basically, um, I'm here by the community. Um, Gerald, you want to um, speak and we're gonna keep going. Hello, I'm Gerald Takano. I am uh, former uh, Chief Deck Brown's appointment uh, to the board. And again, my, my whole career was spent with Raleigh and uh, at her request, uh, I was appointed to the board on this creation. Nice to meet you, Chair. Mr. Johnny. Mr. Johnny. Uh, unmuting myself. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can hear. Yes, you. can hear you. Yes, um, uh, good evening, board, uh, police chief, uh, uh, Madam Chair. My name is Johnny Thomas. I'm a certified peer. I'm a public advocate. Um, I'm a staunch believer in in this board and everything that it's trying to accomplish. And I'm looking forward to doing everything that I can uh, with outreach in the community to help your transition chief to be easy and, and to get things done. And so anything I can do with ACORN or anybody, uh, feel free to let me know because I'm in the community a lot of my time spent in the community. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. I appreciate that. Right. Jeremy. Hi, Chief Patterson. My name is Jeremy Roca, and I am the LGBT um, member on the board. I just want to say welcome. You honor us. You honor the people of Raleigh with your presence. And as I told you at your installation, I pray for you. As your brother in faith, I want you to succeed. So um, I have so much questions for you, but please know it comes from a good space. Um, and so I'm here to help make our city better. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Jeremy, so much. Thank you, for, and I appreciate your prayers. We need prayer. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Ty. Good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair. Chief uh, Patterson, I'm, my name is Ty Harrell. Uh, we actually, before I get into any overview about myself, we actually had the pleasure of, uh, or I had the pleasure of uh, being introduced to you and meeting you um, through our Longview Neighborhood Association meeting that took place last week. Uh -huh. And I have pinned a little message to you basically saying thank you for your time um, and your commitment to the citizens of Raleigh and for presenting to the Neighborhood Association. 
So let me echo many of those sim similar thoughts from uh, previously. Thank you again for your time and being with us tonight. Um, I'm a former state representative and a lifelong Raleighite. Um, I am so excited about being on the board and what the potential uh, for the, the relationship between the community and the police department, the Raleigh Police Department can ultimately become. I know there's a long way to go, a lot of details to be ironed out on the inside, but uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more from you and hearing, uh, and hearing more from uh, the community so that we can have a tighter integration and integral aspect of uh, where we need to be as a, as, a, as a dynamic city. So thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Terrell. Appreciate that. It's great to see you again. Deontay. Good evening, Chief. I'm Deontay Thomas. I'm, the, I'm now the attorney um, partner on this board. I've been here since the inception, but inception, but I moved up from an alternate member to the position I am in now. And I'm the chief public defender of Wake County. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Dr. Sandy. Good evening, I'm uh, Cindy Cottle. I'm the mental health uh, appointee appointed re relatively recently. Uh, I am a clinical psychologist by training and I have spent my entire career working with individuals who have mental illness, who have been accused of crimes or convicted of crimes. And I have also worked with various law enforcement agencies conducting evaluations and pre-employment screenings and things like that. So nice welcome. to meet you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, Ms. Genevieve Sims. Thank you, Madam Chair. Welcome, um, Chief Patterson. We look forward to working with you. I am an attorney by training, and as on this board, I am an at-large member. Yes, ma'am. Nice meeting you. And we have two city employees, um, Travis. Yes, ma'am. My name is Travis McCullum. I've worked with the Department of Equity and Inclusion. I actually serve as the liaison for the Fair Housing Hearing Board and the Human Relations Commission, but I always love to be a part of police advisory's work just because those are human relations issues. So happy to be here and pleasure to meet you. Nice meeting you. And love Demetrius. the hair. Love the hair. <laughs> Demetrius. Um, good evening, Chief. My name is Demetrius Edwards. I, too, work for um, the Department of Equity and Inclusion. I'm one of the leaders in the department. Um, currently, I am the staff liaison for the Police Advisory Board and also the Mayor's Committee for Persons with Disability. Um, so we'll be working closely together. Anything I can help to um, make the transition smoothly, any information, anything like that, I can be aware of. So um, thank you for being here. Thank you. Nice to meet you as well. And we also have um, David Bland, who's out. Um, um, and we also have Greer Webb. He's the youngest one. Well, uh, yeah, he's the youngest one on our board. He's at UNC. He had an event there at UNC. He's out. And Sean Ingram, which um, also worked with youth. Um, mm -hmm. So Sean is not here as well. So those three are out for, to for tonight. I'm just going to um, briefly um, ask any of the members have any questions, brief questions for the chief. Please speak. Mr. Thomas. Gerald. Mr. Thomas, I can't hear you. You're mute. He's muted again. You're okay. mute. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. I, I, I think Gerald answered the question. Um, I had asked about the officer on the, on the um, acorns. Do he respond in um, with a uniform or did, did he go as a plain clothes? So and Mr. Gerald explained that you, for, that you don't do that because my reason I uh, question that is that as somebody in the community and somebody who suffers with mental illness and somebody who also watches it, I know how people respond to your uniform. Right. And it's much more different 
then how are we going to respond to somebody who naturally walks up and says, hey, listen, we're trying to help you. I do understand, you know, he has to have protection. I would figure he would be in plain clothes with his with the badge, maybe to, to, to have that instead of come up there like well, what you're wearing right now, which would probably put up a wall outside of I've been approached by officers with what I'm wearing, but I know there was an officer because of the gun and the badge and maybe the hat. I was just wondering, is, is, is that going to be something you look into as time progresses on? Yeah, so that, and that's a great question. And, and thank you, Gerald, for clarifying that. Um, I did not indicate that in, in, in when I was talking to you. So yes, he's absolutely right. The officers in the Acorns, they wear plain clothes. Um, they wear civilian clothes. Um, they do have a uniform per se, just so that they are identifiable when they go out and do education campaigns. So you, if you see them on TV and in the media, they will have a collared shirt on, a polo shirt that says acorns, and then just with some slacks with it. Um, and the officers will be armed because they are police officers. But typically when they're out in, in interacting and engaging with customers and individuals, they would just be in plain clothes, just regular clothes that you, you know, street clothes that you'll see them because you're absolutely right. The uniform is a deterrent. And we want um, the individuals that we deal with to feel comfortable, to be able to open up and to talk to the officers so that we can get them the resources they need. So um, we feel that the best means to do that is in plain clothes rather than in uniform. Thank you, Chief. Um, Deontay? Yes, ma'am. Um, once again, thank you for your time, Chief. Uh, question that I had, and it kind of dovetails with what you just said, um, if we have a situation where Acorns is called and the social worker is the one making the approach uh, ostensibly to get this person services and help them through their crisis, um, but then this situation evolves when is charged with a crime, how do we reconcile that with this person being a city of Raleigh police officer for all intents and purposes? and going in there initially to give this person services, but then being made a witness or even a victim, uh, hopefully not, but a, a witness to this and being a part of the state and possible further prosecution of that. And you can answer that in regards to um, the ways that you've seen this done, these kind of programs work before. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just a new program to us. So I don't know how other uh, municipalities and cities have handled that kind of issue. Right. So, I mean, just to be clear, again, the social workers are not police officers. They're not armed. They are civilian personnel. And so they don't have any authority that what a police officer would have. Um, if there's a situation that is volatile, that may end up being volatile, then a police officer is a police officer. And that's why we have the officers paired with the social workers. They would, they would take action as a police officer or call a uniform officer to the scene if it's something violent um, that is occurring. Um, we, we, there is no expectation ever that if it starts to become a hot scene, like I was saying, that the social worker has to stay in that. Um, they certainly can retreat. We will make sure our officers that are with them will make sure that they're going to be safe at all times. Um, we know, though, that, you know, realistically speaking, it may start off calm and then it may escalate into something else. Um, the officer is trained in how to handle that situation, and that would be to get the social worker out of there, get the proper resources there, and then mitigate that and de-escalate it as best that they can. And that's how we have seen it. Um, in Charlotte, it was the same setup. Um, with that, the officers would go in. And in Charlotte, the uniform, they, they just didn't do plain clothes all the time. They did a uniform. The police officers had a uniform that kind of, that you would recognize that they were police officers. They wore a bulletproof vest. Um, it didn't look like what I'm wearing specifically. It was a polo shirt, but they had a bulletproof vest. They had all their gear around their um, belt and they had like a BDU type pants that they would wear. And again, that was you know for officer safety because at the end of the day, if the situation does escalate, they have to react. We have a legal obligation to um, handle that situation. So I hope that answers your question. And, and, and one more thing I want to emphasize again, if I haven't already, is that if there is a call for service, like if there's a call, 911 call goes out right now where somebody's in crisis, we're not sending acorns to that. They are not equipped to go on those hot calls. We would send our officers um, there to try to de-escalate the situation. But then on the back end, 
is then when ACORNS would do a follow up with an intervention to get resources to that individual once the situation is stabilized. I gave you the example of the office, uh, the barricaded subject, but again, the ACORNS team did not go to that front door and try to talk to that individual. They tried to communicate with him by phone. And when he refused to talk to them, then they had to go um, a different route. I hope that answered your question, Mr. Thomas. I, I, I'm sure I'll have more questions, but I'll let somebody else have some time right now. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Mr. Thomas. Uh, <clears throat> yes, ma'am. The, the, the question that I had was when the uh, original officer responded, the person that was barricaded, were they charged with it before ACORN? Now, you say ACORN comes on the back end, and I totally under, understand that right there. Um, but when they respond to a crisis, um, once the cuffs go on, whatever happened that created the crisis just got escalated as far as that individual. So how 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 are you handling that part of it? And do you do you personally go back and look at the 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 video of what happened to see how the officer handled that? Like, you know, did they could they have done something to to and de-escalate it a little bit more because I know these officers a lot of times they go in there they have to go in there with their prepared for anything and I, I've watched a few times where the situation where maybe somebody with a common head or maybe if it was a little bit more talking was done or even if a therapist was there they might have not do you, I mean do you understand what I'm saying once the officer's there in the uniform you already mm -hmm. have a situation you already figure the person's going to go to jail mm -hmm. then you say you refer him to ACORN but then the person has been cuffed or put in a squad car. So how does that actually unfold as far as them getting charged with something? Yes. So I, I think I understand what you're saying. So in that initial interaction, where an arrest is made, let's say we have to make an arrest. So that person would be transported to the jail and processed. If there has to be an involuntary commitment order sought, then on the back end, ACORNS would help. ACORNS is not going to come out at the time when they're being arrested um, necessarily. Um, and in fact, I don't know of any instance where ACORNS have had to make an arrest of anyone. Um, that would be the role of the uniform officer uh, or additional officers coming. Now on the back end, once the arrest is made, if there are some referral services that is needed, the officer can then refer, make a referral to ACORNS. And then once that person's released uh, from jail or IVC papers have been served and that person goes to treatment and they are released from that treatment, then ACORNS would make contact with them and see what other resources they may need. Um, if it's housing, we try to work with some of our partners on that. If it's um, substance abuse where they have to go to treatment, we help with getting them there. We help with putting in touch with other resources that they may need. <clears throat> so again, ACORNS is not doing the enforcement, if you will. They're not doing the law enforcement aspect of it. They are on the back end as a referral service. Um, Jeremy. Thank you, Madam um, Chair. Chief Patterson, um, before I share this, I want to preface this and say that this conversation may be triggering for those in our board or even listening since this is a per it's, it's mental health. And we know a friend, a family member, or someone close to our hearts that can be on that receiving end of, the, of this discussion. So I just want to preface that. Mm -hmm. um, the question that I have is, does, does it have to be housed with RPD? Um, and I ask that not, I really do. Um, does, does, our, does, our, does our outreach to those who are going through anything have to go through RPD and does our RPD want that burden on themselves? Um, I mean, I have 9-11 taught us that we have brave people willing to run into a building. Mm -hmm. um, so as I say that, I'm saying that I can hold both tension to say they're, they can, yeah. And so that's my question. And I think, for example, I live across from Moore Square. So if I call 911, can we have like a 919 number that's like a a community outreach number, mm -hmm. I, it's just, it doesn't seem to make sense humbly. I respectfully, it doesn't seem to make sense to me. And well, I'm only 30, so it doesn't have to make sense to me, but, <laughs> uh -huh. um, and also that form that we ask people to sign. Um, I think HIPAA rights should be protected whether people have, are going through an app. I mean, it's been a hard, hard 19 months for all of us. Mm -hmm. So sure. whoever's going, 
to be receiving those calls? I don't know. I'm just, maybe we can have these discussions off the camera, Chief. I'm open to, I mean. Yes, and, and I understand what you're saying, Jeremy, but let me, let me make this one point um, that I think is critical for police. Yes, so yes. I come from a community policing background. I believe that we need the community to help us to solve the problems that we're dealing with in our society. The police, we cannot do it by ourselves. And I fully believe that the police should be embedded in the community and that we should seek partnerships that are healthy and strong. I think that ACORNS is a strong partnership because the police does deal with people who are in mental crisis. We deal with people who are have, have mental illness and I don't think that you could ever separate the two. Where that initial call that people are going to make through 911. Now, are there models out there where the police do not respond to those kind of calls and don't handle those kind of calls, like the cahoots model on the West Coast and the Midwest? Um, that is a a model that does work. But also, too, when you look behind, you know, you do the research behind that, you find that the police are still the ones responding when there is a crisis. So, in doing that. I think it's better that we're prepared for that, that we have units that know how to handle that, that we have personnel that are trained, and then we can do backup and referrals on the back end as well. I think we miss something when we take the police out of the equation. And we've heard it time and time again, you know, police are not totally trained to handle these kinds of situations. And I'm inclined to agree with that from a clinical perspective, from a psychological perspective, um, I understand that point of view, but still at the end of the day, it's the call is made to 911. So it's in my interest as a chief to make sure that my people, my personnel are trained to some level in how to deal with that situation so that we can have a favorable outcome rather than a negative outcome. And whatever those resources are to do that, then I'm willing to make those commitments to that. And for us, ACORNS is one of those resources. Yes, ma'am. I, I respect your I respect where you're coming from. Thank Anyone you. Anyone else have any more questions for the chief? Okay, Cindy. That was Dr. Cindy. So um, thank you, Chief, again. I appreciate your wanting to collaborate with this board. And I think that um, um, I think that that will be very helpful moving forward. I have a question. You had mentioned about partnering with other organizations, and I was wondering a little bit more about that in terms of which organizations that you guys are partnering with and kind of what's, what's the nature of, of that. And Cindy, you know, that is a great question, and I don't have my list. We have a whole list that our police attorney handed to me to say these are some of the partners that we're looking to um, work with. I don't have that list with me. I am so sorry, but I can follow up with you to give you some of those resources. Um, and being new to Raleigh, I'm just not familiar um, with a lot of them, but I certainly can follow up with you on that. Um, and I'll tell you too, I have been visiting, going to different community groups and meetings and various things. And as I am out and about, I'm getting cards for uh, advocacy groups, for resources, those who do meals on wheels and various things. I say, thank you for this card. I'm going to give this to our ACORNS unit because that's another resource that will be available to, um, to help those who are in need. So I just don't Absolutely. have that list with me and I'm sorry that I don't have that. Well, and certainly anything that we can do too as a board to serve as a resource as well. Um, I'm, I know that this is something that we all feel pretty com um, strong about in terms of helping individuals with mental illness. I do have one other question in terms of helping your officers um, who work on the ACORNS unit on that end uh, after they've been involved in working with the unit or support services uh, the officers there would have. I think you broke up a little bit. I don't know if it's on my okay. end or your end, but that second part, you're asking about the officers, maybe what services are for them? Uh, yeah, support services for um, officers who have been working on help them deal with the uh, ongoing strain. And you know, some of the things that Jeremy was talking about earlier, after time, over time, they, they might need some of that you know, support services or re-education. And I was just wondering about that kind of thing for them. 
Yes. So again, another kudos to Chief Deck Brown um, and previous chiefs that have put some things in place for the organization, which is great. One, we have a on-call and on-staff psychologist who is available to do debriefs and to talk to officers uh, because our officers are dealing with a lot of trauma, right? And as an organization, I want to make sure that we are trauma-informed and we have those services for them. So we have a um, psychologist on staff for that purpose, but also too, we are making investments in, in our wellness program to be able to provide additional resources. I mean, at the end of the day, we always have EAP services that officers can um, rely on, but I want more than that. I want to make sure that our officers are whole, you know, mentally, emotionally, financially, um, if any are dealing with PTSD. So we're looking, actively looking for whatever other services are available for those officers um, for that. But right now we do have our in-house psychologist. Chair. Yes, Chief. Um, some of the, uh, the board members, they had some concern about maybe some possible conflict of interest uh, between social workers and the law enforcement function. And you cleared uh, answered some of the questions on, on defining the roles and how they'll each will be responding under given situations. Um, has the uh, has there been a, finalized, a finalization of the job descriptions of the roles as far as the, the social worker and the officers who are assigned to ACORNS? Uh, I imagine they'll be slightly different for the officers than a regular patrol officer job description of kind of might be one specific for ACORNS officers and something similar that help will de-conflict with social workers. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, and we do have that job description for those individuals and their duties, exactly what is outlined for them to do, which is separate than the officers. We also have an internal um, policy, of course, that delineates and talks about what the role of the social worker is, what the role of the officer is, because we wanna be clear that those lines don't cross or that they don't blur, even though they are working together. Um, but again, too, you know, we're this is a work in progress. We're gonna be constantly evaluating and revising as we seem um, fit for those roles. Anyone else? Chief, we want to thank you for coming to our meeting tonight. It was a pleasure of seeing you again. I want to say that Ms. Martha Pitlin, Acorn did reach out to her. <laughs> we are so thankful that they got Ms. Martha Pitlin. Yeah. Um, the community is glad that they're trying to. Um, get Ms. Pittman in a better space and a better mm -hmm. place. So thank you so much for coming to our meeting and, you know, our door is open. I'm sure we're going to have more questions, but at this time, we just thank you for um, allowing us to um, learn more about what ACORN is going to do and how it's doing it. And we know it's a new process for you and for ACORN. So I support and what we're, you know, trying to do on this board is very valuable for our community. So thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else have anything? I just want to say, I, I want to say if I can, in closing, sure. just, um, again, thank you for having me. Um, uh, and we can do a follow-up if we need to, and I can actually have the sergeant that's over the unit come and speak. She can speak more in-depthly to the day-to-day -day kind of thing. Um, to give you more information. But I just want to say that I am looking forward to working with this board. Um, I don't shy away uh, from the difficult uh, questions or for the difficult discussions. I think it's healthy for us to have it, even when we can, and that we can agree to disagree on certain things, but I think we can still work together. So I'm very much looking forward to continuing to work with this group. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And um, Mr. Raleigh, we thank you so much for stepping in. I know you're learning a lot and you're learning about this board, but thank you so much for um, coming to our meeting tonight and just um, helping and giving us an understanding what we need to do if we need something from, um, from the Office of Inclusion. We just really appreciate you being present here um, tonight. Um, and we'll be calling on you. <laughs> we'll probably be calling on you, but we thank you so much for helping Dimitri. So um, I'm glad the board members got a chance to see you and um, you introduced yourself and be available for us as well. 
Absolutely, Chair, uh, Chairwoman. You know, I will reiterate, certainly my door is open. I know we have had a number of exchanges and, and just want to reiterate that my role is to, to help support and facilitate, um, you know, the work of this, this board. Uh, I've got two wonderful staff members here present tonight uh, that have done yeoman's work um, day in and day out, but certainly uh, view me as a resource uh, and I'm happy to answer any question. Um, so thanks again and look forward to, to continuing to work together. Thank you. Board members, if there's anything else you want to say, last words before we adjourn this meeting. I put in a motion for us to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, board members, and we'll be um, seeing each other soon. Y'all have a very nice and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thanks all.